It's time for Holier Than Now. This is the segment uh, we try to do each week to highlight some of the ridiculous things that people, often sporting lanyards, uh, are doing with public money or otherwise in view of the public and who aren't willing to have a yarn about why they're doing it. Uh, you would have noticed this week the headlines have been dominated by the treaty and all the ridiculous complaining, infighting and lollygagging that accompanies such discussions. Politicians, including the Prime Minister, trekked up to the Turanga Waiwai Marae uh, where they were recently lectured once again by the likes of Tuku Morgan for targeting Māori. He was referring predominantly to the Treaty Principles Bill, uh, which has not even been open for submissions yet and which looks likely to die in early death because both uh, New Zealand First and National made it categorically clear their intentions not to back the legislation past its first reading. Uh, now this is clearly a debate that we as a country need to have but I think we need to have it and then swiftly move on from it because while most real New Zealanders are struggling with uh, their mortgages and just trying to get on with it, the media and academic class, that's the Chardonnay sipping, Kandala dwelling, rosebush trimming types, are whipping up a self-serving hysteria and typing up a storm on their laptops in their Victoria University offices, writing articles called Pākehā Paralysis and claiming that the country's on, uh, country on this verge of a civil war. I don't mean to belittle the significance of the Treaty of Waitangi as a topic, but what I do mean to say is that while many New Zealanders, uh, Māori included, leave this country in search of higher pay, more affordable living or just a general escape from their increasingly moribund surroundings. Our media and political analysts are sat round lecturing people about how they should interpret the Treaty of Waitangi and writing self-aggrandizing newsroom articles about baking cookies with Moana Jackson and publishing poetry about how important they are to the good fight. Uh, so the first thing on the list this week is everyone making an absolute sandwich out of this debate for their own selfish reasons and then most importantly not fronting up to us to explain themselves afterwards. Uh, I also want to talk uh, about Kylie Quince, who has been for some reason appointed as the sole chair of the Independent Understanding Policing Delivery Group. Uh, this group has released a report this week looking into the bias of police uh, and police delivery in New Zealand. Quince is a dogmatic academic that passionately calls people racist for a living. She's done it with uh, veteran career lawyer Gary Judd before and continues to enjoy uh, the cushy positions on boards and leadership roles. So it's no surprise to see that she's at it again with the police. It's worth noting that this group was formed in 2020 following the uh, police killing of George Floyd when the Kylie Quinces of the world were all calling for police to be completely defunded, uh, which was a ridiculous movement that sort of lost steam after COVID. And so perhaps um, in an attempt to invite their biggest detractors into the fold and stop them from firing pot shots from the outside, they appointed Kylie Quince to chair this group. The report revealed some absolute Absolutely mind-boggling facts about New Zealand's policing, like the fact that if you're a member of a criminal organisation or have prior criminal convictions, you're more likely to be prosecuted by police. Uh, so once I'd recovered from that earth-shattering revelation, I of course made some attempts to get Quince on the program to deliver the report's findings herself, but once again, uh, she wasn't interested. So a okay, uh, shout-out uh, to Kylie Quince once again this week and uh, all of her academic mates. Victoria University and the like.